Jacob, a podcast listener in Louisville, Kentucky, writes in to ask this. It seems like America is moving towards a culture where businesses such as Hobby Lobby, Chick-fil-A, and Burger King are taking vocal stances on issues on which the Bible speaks very clearly. Should Christians proactively seek to patronize businesses that appear to line up with biblical positions and avoid those that would contradict the Bible's teaching? A second podcast listener writes in and asks Pastor John, you recently tweeted goodbye Burger King because Burger King has gone supportive of homosexuality. By that tweet, did you imply that Christians should not eat there again? What I meant in that tweet on July 4, which said, quote, goodbye Burger King. If you wonder why, watch the last five seconds of the video and weep. And I put a link to the video that Burger King was spreading. What I meant by that goodbye was, I don't intend to eat there anymore. Now that could change. They could change. I could change. But for now, I'm done with Burger King. But uh, it did not mean, and it did not say, that others have to make a similar judgment. I think Christians are free to eat at Burger King without my judgment upon them. So don't go there. I'm not uh, the, the answer to that question is no, I did not say that Christians should not eat at Burger King. I said, I'm not going to eat at Burger King. Now, here's the question. Why did I arrive at that decision? What, what took me there? And to be honest, it, 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 it's two levels. There's a gut level, and then there's a reflective level. And the reflective biblical level always has to check the gut level. But I'll share the gut level with you because I think most of our lives are lived at the gut level. And it's uh, shaping our minds according to Scripture so that guts are good. Uh, it is the big business of the Christian life. Realistically, um, I am moved by my gut as much as any other way, and therefore I have to always go back and, and check. So here's, here's the gut level. I thought the promotional video for Burger King that I'll link to in the tweet was disgusting because of its language, immoral because of its advocacy of sexual sin, and heartbreaking because of its exploitation of children, closing with a little girl maybe four years old, hugging two women and saying, I love my two mommies. So at the gut level, I was revolted and I was angry. And I wanted nothing to do with that kind of crude and destructive propaganda. Um, but one must always check one's gut reactions by scripture, uh, since we're all imperfect in the way we respond to things. So here's the more seasoned thinking that leads me to stay away from Burger King. Um, it's an application of 1 Corinthians 10, 27 20 to 29. Let me read it to you, see if you think it applies. If one of the unbelievers invites you to a dinner and you are disposed to go, eat whatever is set before you without raising any question on the ground of conscience. But if someone says to you, this has been offered in sacrifice to idols, then do not eat it for the sake of the one who informed you and for the sake of conscience. I do not mean your conscience, but this, but his. For why should my conscience, my, my liberty, be determined by someone else's conscience? So here's the application I make to Burger King. Um, they invite me by their existence and their advertising to come and eat their burgers. And I am free to go and happy to go without uh, doing any research at all as to what the uh, beliefs of the management are about anything. I don't, I don't care. They're, they're, that's behind the scenes and they're just serving up burgers. I like burgers. I'll eat the burgers. doesn't matter, you know, if they're covetous or racist or sexually illicit, uh, whatever. I'm free to enjoy the burger as a uh, hamburger, not as a promotion of an agenda that I might consider offensive and sinful. Uh, their, their upper management may be philandering and racist all over the place, and I don't know it. I'm just enjoying the burger, and my conscience is not implicated by that, and I'm not responsible for their motives, and I'm not defiled by their sin. But then comes this video 
where the leaders of Burger King are going out of their way to make sure that people know what they stand for. In other words, Burger King wants to make it an issue. They're making it an issue. They're making it an issue that their burgers stand for the endorsement of homosexual intercourse. This is not about the reality of same-sex attraction merely. We all have to deal with that. That's a reality. It's a broken reality. We've written lots of blogs, and we've talked about the the heartache and how to reckon with same-sex attraction. This is not about that. This is about the endorsement with great fanfare of same-sex intercourse. They want to go on record as publicly and as blatantly as possible that their restaurant represents the championing of homosexual intercourse. When that happens, I am put in a situation like the person in 1 Corinthians 10, who is told by his dinner host, oh, by the way, this meat that you're about to eat, we are celebrating uh, the sacrifice to an idol. And Paul says, okay, now at this point, your freedom to eat at an unbeliever's house, which you certainly have, is overruled by an act of love that says the meat is no longer mere meat. It's a symbol of sin. So to avoid confusing your host or anybody else watching, don't eat it because now the idle connection turns your eating into a kind of endorsement or at least a statement of indifference to idolatry. So my calling Uh, is not to crusade against Burger King. I'm not called to lead a boycott. My calling is to have a clear conscience and to bear clear testimony. Burger King has chosen to make their restaurant a public brazen symbol of the endorsement of sin. That's why I said goodbye. Thank you, Pastor John. And if you would like to ask your own question, please send it in to us at AskPastorJohn at DesiringGod.org. And to follow this daily podcast series, be sure to download our free app for the iPhone, iPad, and Android phone or device. And for those of you who use Androids, I have great news from our product manager, Ross Chasey. The redesigned Android app is now available in Google Play and the Kindle app stores. The new features include access to the full archive of episodes within the app, the ability to search all those episode titles, and also you can now listen while scrolling through and searching the other episodes. So props to Ross Chasey and Josh Edder and to our app developers for making this happen. So go to the App Store and search for Ask Pastor John. So what tools do I need to study my Bible well? It's a question we get a lot, and I'll ask Pastor John tomorrow. I'm your host, Tony Ranke. We'll see you soon.